and welcome to the 72 PC podcast, the only podcast where you can join the conversation and the game. With us this week, we have Eric. Ah, oh, sorry, I had to clear my throat right there. Hello! And we have Tom. No, I refuse to be part of this podcast because the uh, what? Rocket League game looks like cyberpunk. Uh, it's neon. It's I like, mean, they've had this uh, kind of... This I mean, is like neon. throwback Rocket Labs. Yeah, I know. I'm just being a dick. I mean, yeah. I mean, imagine I'm, that. Yeah, right? but what's what's new? Yeah, nothing. Literally not that. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not at all. So someone around us being a dick. That never happens. <laughs> it's always uh, one of us. We just rotate always. sometimes. Guaranteed. I think, I think I take a disproportionate amount of that, though. I mean, I'm not going to say that it's 90%. But like 92, 93, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, I, I take it. I own it. Every group needs one. I don't know. It might, uh, be, uh, might be Tom. I do take Tom, it a significant Tom, amount of time. Tom might be the... <laughs> the um, but isn't that my job? Like, let, let's just count the total number of times in which one of us has played Devil's Advocate. <laughs> And which person that tends to be? Uh, it's Ark. Def- okay. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we don't have a hardliner anywhere, do we? That like takes a stance and then never backs down off of it? Why? why oh, that's me. Would Sorry, we guys. A hardliner. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> Fuck, Adam. Can you just chill Adam. out for a minute? Adam, you need to learn what nuance is. Yeah, yeah no. come on. Dude. There are shades of gray in this world. You know? I know. I'm just incredibly opinionated and, and, and all of that for sure. Always stuck to your guns. And- Always. I wish you were just more <laughs> understanding. Uh, so what's uh, up, guys? But anyway, how's, how's your week been? Pretty good. Uh, I got busy. <laughs> <laughs> I got my chair assembled finally. Oh, cool. How do you like yeah. it? It's um overstated difference between the Omega and the Titan. Anyone looking to get secret chairs? The Omega is like an inch and a half, two inches taller. And has a built-in lumbar support. I'm not sure that I would endorse it for the price difference. Hmm. Just, just, yeah. just an FYI for folks. How much would you endorse it over a regular, low-quality office chair? It's a nice chair. I mean, it, I still I enjoy the chair. It's just, I like if you're debating, you're like, man, I don't know if I can put down the extra cash for the Titan. Do get the mm-hmm. Omega. It's just fine. You won't have an issue. Okay. It's just but, comfy. Yeah. yeah, it's just yeah. fucking comfy. It's a nice comfy chair. I've had no issues. I have um enjoyed uh plugging in a controller, playing some Hades, and then just like reclining in the chair. Yeah. Which is kind of kind of nice. Like you can actually use it almost like a fucking recliner. The uh my favorite thing about these secret labs chairs is that they feel sturdy. Like, it, it doesn't yeah. feel like this thing is going to fall apart. It doesn't feel like if I lean back too far, the whole thing's just going to crack in half. Yeah. Um, which was always the case with my cheap office chairs. This is, it's a thing. It's a whole it's unit. probably not squeaky either. Like, no. some chairs no are. No squeaks. <laughs> However, it will make you have a heart attack the first time you actually um, tilt the chair backwards. Because, yep. holy shit, that tilt will go back and you'll feel like you're going to fucking head plant. <laughs> <laughs> It just goes like it's got no chill. <laughs> but no, I, I dig it. It's um the same exact one Tom got, and the same exact mm-hmm. one another one of our friends got. So yeah, yeah. We uh we really got this so we could go pro in Dota two because you have to have the chair to have the skills. I mean that's just yeah. kind of how it is. Um, it's just like you know, in Earth, sport, you're... you need to have a cool jersey before you're good at the game. Yeah. So, Irk, your uh, your Dota play has it gotten better since you've been sitting in that chair? Because mine did. Substantially. Like, like EG's already difference. reaching out. EG's already reaching out to me. Oh, nice. Cool. Yeah. Team Secret did it for me. So, uh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll have to see. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll be rooting for you guys. No, you won't. You hate the game. Wait, who are well, you? I still want you to. Irk, Irk, we're, you know, we're <laughs> way too above this. We're we're above seventy two PC. We're here. I, as ha- I hate it a lot more than I hate you guys. Oh well, that's that's fair. I mean, that's pretty impressive. 
<laughs> so I imagine a pretty strong disdain. You underestimate my hate for Dota. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, no, uh, that was still one of my favorite my favorite streams that we did was you know trying to teach Josh and Adam during a show how to play Dota. It was beautiful. Dude, that video we did, I wish we could have had uh, cams on Josh and Adam because that would have been like right? eyes glassed over <laughs> when the fuck is this over? My eye- <laughs> yeah. Wait, what the fuck? <laughs> My eyes and ears That's glaze over when you guys talk about it for too long, let alone like trying to actually learn and take in the... the... <laughs> this is the last hit. Inner work is the game. Here's how yeah. you pull creep camps. It's like, oh my God. Yeah, fuck that. But um, actually, we're here. I don't want to talk long about it, but um, they just had a monster patch in Dota. Oh, oh my god! Brand, brand new hero. Um, Dota every three. every hero got a brand new ability with a brand new item that activates it. So it's it's a whole lot of shit. Where pretty much the scene is on fire right now because no one knows how it's shaken out. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. it again feels like an entirely different game. Well, I, I can't say it feels. It looks like an entirely different game. I still haven't played the new patch yet, and Jesus Christ, I had 200 messages from patch release to, like, the end of my workday when I caught up on the Dota chat. I had 200 fucking messages from these guys, like, oh my god, they did this thing, and oh shit, Tom, all your heroes are broken now, and here's this item, and these builds are broken, and, like, what the fuck? Yeah, it, it, it was a ton. There was a meme out there right now that, um... It's a Valve developer talking to Gabe's like, so we really need to spend some more time on um, new player recruitment. And then Val and Gabe's like, nah, let's just do a patch. So then it shows this new patch. It's like, you want to teach your friends how to play Dota? Here, now you can't teach them. This game is too fucking complex. Because <laughs> it literally just overcomplicated things even more. Yep, somehow. Like... That was always the big differentiator between League of Legends and Dota 2, which is, you know, hey, can I can I learn some some rules and can I jump into this game with a modicum of knowledge about how other MOBAs work? And uh, the answer for Dota 2 is no, go fuck yourself, um, <laughs> which is perfect for the Dota 2 audience. It's what we expect. Yeah. Uh, but no, nope, other than that, played a lot of it. It was a good time. Been enjoying my time with it. Was it a good um, time, or did you enjoy it because you had no choice? No, I enjoy, I've been in, thoroughly enjoying my time with okay. it. Um, though we did have the worst player I've had. Like, he was just a complete asshat. And then followed by having some of the most enjoyable people I've ever played with, randomly. <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds like Dota. But, yeah, um, I'm going to stop talking about that because it'll keep going. Yeah, I was starting to so, close over a little bit there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I figured I'd get off of that before. <laughs> um, Don't worry. We'll uh, we'll switch to Dark Souls talk here soon. Nope. Um, but one of the things I did play a lot of in the chair was Hades because it's built for a controller. So I'm starting to realize that it's a game where the more you understand the mechanics of the game, the more things mean. So I wasn't understanding the whole um, shit. What are they called? The things the gods give you. Um, damn it, what are they called? I have it in my boons? notes, but I can't see it. Boons, yeah, thank you. I'm starting to understand more of the boons and how the synergies of the boons play together. You can get some really cool shit. It's still not Isaac level, but it's definitely more um, than what I initially gave it credit for. Um, I've had some builds where you can really... Like your dash, that's your evasion. All of a sudden, it can turn to do damage. It can make you more invincible. It'll put negative effects on people. And it got to the point where I got all the way to the end. Just evade, attack, evade, attack, evade, attack, evade, attack. And I was just a blur yep. all over the screen, out of control. And it got me all the way to the end just because I had all the right boons to do that. So, I mean, I, I'm really digging it. The story, the, I mean, I'm not a big story guy, but the way they're telling it is kind of cool. The meta game on top of the game is nice. So, yeah, just more time in Hades. Really cool game. Really nice game to chill out to as well. Just because the way the hack and slash part of it, you don't have to give it a shit ton of attention if you don't want. Didn't Hades make it into a lot of uh, Game of the Year nominations? Yeah. Yeah. It has, and it's well-deserved. It's it's a very, very well-done game. 
Yeah, um, I've been wanting to get back to streaming, and if I do start bumping back up streams, I'll definitely have some Haiti streams because, as Scott said, he was just watching me, and he's having a good time watching it. So, like, I really want to just get back out there with it. And I want to beat it. I've yet to have a successful run. Uh, I was super Same. fucking close. I was right there. Like, I I won't get too deep, but, yeah, I mean, it was it was at the end. It would be like losing to mom's heart your first time getting to mom's heart kind of thing. In the mining of Isaac. Yes, yes, yes. Thanks for the context. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, they just pull out the heart of your mother. Damn, I lost again. <laughs> oh, no. Well, it happens it's every you, time. After you beat your mom, you have to kill her heart. Well, yeah, I, mean, I mean, honestly, that whole sense. part was so dark for that game. I loved it, but man, that was such a dark concept. Yeah, I mean, the... The game's concept's pretty dark, too. Yeah. Just I general. mean, you are killing things with your tears. <laughs> and you're hiding from your mother who wants to kill you because she thinks God said kill your son. I mean, yeah. I see no issues with any of this. Like, I don't get why you guys are making such a big deal about it. Did you not grow up this way? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm having some questions no, about my own childhood now. I, I so. did not grow up that way at all. <laughs> yeah, it, um, you're not finding a... <laughs> You're the not supposed to be Isaac was colors. just it was just my my whole life, guys. Like there was nothing weird. I was like, oh cool. They finally built a childhood simulator. That's neat. <laughs> Tom's hiding in cellars, going into basements, <laughs> going to churches. Making and deals with the devil. Well, of course As I'm you making do. deals with the devil. Carrying around his Have dead cat's head. <laughs> that is also one of the more morbid things. You are actively finding your dead cat's body parts. <laughs> And it makes you stronger. <laughs> oh, but Jesus. yeah. Love um. Anyway, someone else say something. Hi. I'm, I'm in. I'm in a dive. I'm in a patch. cyberpunk. Hey. Let's, oh, okay. let's just not talk about it because I'm going to talk about Ragnarok. Oh. Um. I would like to give a big old 72 pin connector. Fuck you to Magic Dave for hurting my arms again. God damn it, Dave. Um, Dave keeps finding all these awesome VR games, including a lot of VR rhythm games. So there's this game called Ragnarok, which is a VR rhythm racing game, uh, which is really cool. Um, rhythm so, racing. Yes, rhythm racing. So uh, you're basically leading a boat full of Viking rowing people down a path to epic Viking music banging on drums in a Guitar Hero-like interface, but, you know, banging on drums with your physical fucking hands. And Jesus, my arms hurt like they never have, ever. Because <laughs> um, you, you got to sit there, and there's four drums, and you got to hit these things. And then, just like the, uh, the rock band, you know, lean the guitar up to get your special going, unfortunately, you have to take a risk in Ragnarok. So when you fill up that meter, if you miss once, you deplete it. It's all the way back down to zero. So to, uh, to get your special up, you have to hit the shields on the side of the boat. So you've got to really, really time, okay, is this clear? Can I do it? Because if you go to hit the shield, miss a note, you're now emptied your gauge, and you don't have a special. So mm. there's, there's a little bit of strategy to this. I kind of like it. The music is good. Um, I don't really see a ton of mod Ability, at least up front but uh it's still very early for this game and uh i like it so far it's nice um i can definitely tell that my beat saber time is uh made me a little better out of the gate but it's different enough that it's not a one-to-one -one translation i'm so gonna have to work to get better at this so you don't see custom maps or anything coming into this um i mean i'm sure i'm sure they will at some point right now there aren't any that i know of um and I don't know. I, this doesn't have the same drive to me that Beat Saber does. Maybe that's just because I've already got Beat Saber, so why would I put custom songs here? But that game, I feel like... Like Beat Saber, I would play any song, right? This game, I'm specifically looking for Viking sea shanties and uh, like old school Dungeons and Dragons uh, tavern tunes. Like just crazy bullshit. I don't want a general purpose music game out of this because the thematic elements are really, really well presented. Huh. Yeah. Okay. 
So, is, it, is there uh, Viking metal? There is Viking metal. There's a lot of Viking metal, actually. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed my time with the Viking metal. Are you okay. going to go buy a row machine, Tom? No, God. <laughs> my arm's already hurt. I don't need any more machines. Well, I didn't know if this was getting you in the rowing mood. No, no. I, I just fucking hurt. <laughs> it's uh it's a good game i'm i'm really enjoying it um you know the the two hours i put into it or not two hours the hour i put into it but god damn is it uh is it a little harsh if you're not prepared one hour's got you sore so that that yeah. makes me want to point out something i've kind of noticed we haven't had dance and tom in a few months i know i took i took a little bit of time off because i had some work stuff to do and then i kept taking time off because i had work stuff to do and then I kept taking time off because I'm lazy. So uh, this week, I've got it completely off of work, and I'm going to be getting back into Beat Saber. So if you would like to check out Dance and Tom, uh, complete with Tom Cam, uh, head over to 72pinconnector.com, join the Discord, and I'll be around. And for those who haven't actually watched this, it's actually super enjoyable, and we used to stream it on Twitch. But because of new DMCA rules, it's a no-go. But this yeah. is actually one of my favorite things to watch in Twitch is because some of these maps are really fucking cool. Yeah. Yeah, Beat Saber is a really cool game. It's a, it's a shame yes. about all the, the DMCA stuff. I was getting a pretty decent following there for a minute and then, uh, then rules. So uh, thanks, RAAA. Luckily, I'm not a person to take hardline stances because I would say that they're an organization <laughs> without any merit or benefit to human society whatsoever, and they're all a bunch of blood-sucking middlemen. But because I'm not that kind of person, I wouldn't say anything like that. Oh, and I also wouldn't tell their mothers to go fuck themselves. <laughs> so, okay. What do their mothers I, I have to do with this other than I making them? Tom just... <laughs> <laughs> so it was started and exists for a good reason. It just gets exploited in situations that it doesn't make sense. I think we just have old rules that don't account for the, the changes of technology and, and the way we experience music now. Yeah, and no one is taking music and streaming it on Twitch to be a radio to make money. No one's doing that, and that's what it should be protecting against. Mm -hmm. Not someone playing Beat Saber. However, because it wasn't written with any fucking gray area, much like Tom's opinions, it hits Beat Saber. Uh, yeah, something about just spineless, blood-sucking leeches on society as a whole. So it's Tom's. It's a bunch of Tom's. Yeah. Okay. Literally okay. just Tom's. <laughs> and um, before we get to the next topic, uh, I definitely see the uh, call for foods talk. Oh. I just skipped over because I don't have shit. I made uh, midnight bacon. Nice. Does that count? Like, hold on. Were you awake and then you just got hungry and made it? Or did you wake up and then make bacon? No, no. God, no. No, I, was, <laughs> I love that. It was midnight. <laughs> Waking up in the middle of the night. Most people are like, oh, my God. And then chug a glass of water in the kitchen. And, and Tom's just like, yeah, oh, just my God. Bacon. Oh, I'm so hungry. He's <laughs> just like, I was throws bacon in the oven or on the skillet. Yeah. <laughs> In the middle of the I night. I was so hoping that was going to be the situation. Like Tom, I've heard people waking up and like I'm grabbing a couple chips. Yeah. I was hoping it was Tom wakes it's, up, grabs the bacon out of the fridge. Instead of waking up and like chugging water so much, you got like the the water streaming down your cheeks and you, yep. your neck and stuff. He's got bacon <laughs> grease just flowing down his face. <laughs> oh, that's not that's not too far from reality. Unfortunately, that was not the case last night. It was just pretty normal i need a break from playing the game that i am currently playing i would like a snack oh look there's bacon yeah it was great yeah big bacon mm. but no um tomorrow i'm making um the same thing i made with chicken not so long ago with like the chicken broth and mushrooms and stuff but with Ooh. pheasant so that'll be interesting ah. i take it back i do have food to talk about um well my uh, my glorious wife, Comrade Bunny, got me an early Christmas gift. I got a sous vide. Ooh. Oh, hey, nice! I got a sous vide. And, Welcome to the oh family. Oh my god, you are so fucking right. How have I never cooked steak this way? It was perfect. I pulled it out. I seared it on both sides. It literally took a half an hour 
to get to this beautiful medium rare. The meat was falling apart, but it still had the nice char thanks to the like searing on one minute both sides. It was god damn, it was good. So now I've got some burgers I'm going to try that with. I've got some chicken and pork chops I'm trying that with. And another big-ass steak I'm going to try this again with. The beautiful thing about sous vide, let's say it's a really big cut and you're like, man, I don't know how long I should cook it. Dude, err on the side of like throwing it in there for three, four fucking hours. It's going to be fine because you won't overcook. You won't get it too hot. So it's you that won't temp. overcook it, but there is something that can happen if you leave it in there for over two hours, or not over two hours, but over two hours after it's been you know cooked up to temp. It can do kind of weird things to the texture. Oh, um, it, it so, turns into a roast. Yeah. So what uh, what this does is we actually got one of them. I, I can't really recommend it because if the company goes under, like I have to buy another sous vide. Um, but we got one with an app that connects through Bluetooth to my phone. Um, and so I literally walked through the thing. I said, okay, I've got a steak. And they said, okay, is it fresh or frozen? Frozen. What do you want to cook it to? Medium rare. So, okay, put it in now. It's preheated. Okay, now we're going to set a timer and let you know when you can grab your steak. And then it Did gives you a timer you? after the timer that says pull it out by here or else the texture gets weird. Um, I will say I didn't notice much texture difference between cooking it, say, two hours and six hours. However, okay. I have had one that was over 24 hours. And while still good, that's when it starts to get really uh, stringy, like a roast mm. wood. You left something yeah. in a sous vide for over 24 hours? Yeah. Just a hot tub. <laughs> like, people will do that with roast a lot. Like, I think actually Huge Erection does that with his uh, roast and stuff, if I'm correct. He can jump in here in a second. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um. Hmm. Um, so if, if you're into cooking especially if you know somebody who likes good steaks like well cooked and you haven't found a, a Christmas present yet I know it's a little late you got about a week but uh, or a little less than a week um, a sous vide is fantastic and you can get them I, I don't know Irk, how much was yours I think mine was 200 like it's not cheap but what uh, dude I bought mine for like 80 price. bucks when it was on sale yeah, see, there you go. And, and <laughs> you know, like, so here's here's the risk. Mine is cool. It's got a lot of cool techno features and automatic timers and recipes and stuff built in. If uh, if Jewel goes out of business, I just have a hunk of wasted plastic. I literally can't do anything with it because it doesn't have buttons. It has oh, no buttons on it whatsoever. That doesn't Mine sound is the like beautiful, a design. Mine's the beautiful blend of I got an app that I can use on my phone. Yep. And it has buttons. And it has a smart feature on it itself where you can say, this is how thick my steak is. This is the doneness I want. Oh, nice. And yeah, it well, says, here's the temperature we're cooking it, and here's the time. Is it voice activated, though? Damn it, no. Actually, mine is voice activated, which is weird. <laughs> I can say, you know, computer set a sous vide for half an inch steak frozen. Medium my, rare. My microwave is what? voice activated. <laughs> that's so great the stupidest thing <laughs> i've never I'm used it at all <laughs> like that I, I literally just push buttons like every microwave, microwave the weather i need to know if i'm gonna have uh, a sandwich or oatmeal for breakfast no i have i have one of those amazon microwaves i got it because it was cheap and it's smaller and it fits on my countertop well but I am not. You can actually your... connect to like it's an so Echo weird Dot. To that it I have no opinion like... <laughs> on any product from a series yeah. of mega conglomerate companies for no reason. So, I have no statement on Adams, but I don't understand no, why not. a company would make a microwave <laughs> that is voice activated. Yeah, as as a feature set, I think that's kind of weird. Not to say anything about any specific brand or <laughs> Shut trademark, up, guys. God. The... Uh, <laughs> no, it, it's. I mean, I will. I will never use it in that way. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, and also to the question of how to take steaks, for me it's medium rare or bust. I like medium rare. I will do usually medium in a restaurant because restaurants they like there's some play in where it'll fall. Yeah. So I usually order medium, and I'm generally happy. Let's see, I'm good with rare, so medium rares is kind of my safety bubble. For just a steak. If it's something like steak and a taco or something, maybe a little more cooked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. and that's something I was explaining uh, to Gina because we was doing tacos the other night. I'm like, it doesn't need to be good beef because you're going to cook the shit out of it. And it's all you're going to taste is the fucking seasoning anyway. Yeah. For stuff like that. 
The only time you need really good beef for something like that is if you're actually doing like strip steak tacos and stuff like that. Or when I say strip steak, steak I mean like you're cutting the steak into strips, not the actual cut of strip steak. Pandemonia if says, if I eat mine steak. well done with steak sauce, can I keep watching? Yes, you can keep watching. You know what? Don't let anybody you know tell you, can... you how you can eat your steak. You know what you can do? You can make your steak exactly how you want it and enjoy it because it's your steak and who the fuck cares how you take your steak. It's your steak. I mean, eat it I how mean, you want it. I'll tell you you're wrong, but <laughs> enjoy it the way you want. <laughs> Eric, let people enjoy things. Yeah, I realize I'm the one making that argument. Let no, people um. enjoy things. <laughs> Speaking of which, I've been enjoying Cyberpunk 2077 despite all of its glaring flaws. Same. Yeah, that, that's what I've been feeling. It's like, I, I kind of like the game in spite of itself because the game tries its best to make you not like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. Oh, right? man. I mean, like, bugginess aside, if you're going into the game because you enjoy open world sandboxes, you're going to be pretty disappointed, I think, because it offers very little in that regard. I mean, it's a yeah. gorgeous, it's a gorgeous city. Like I love just driving around it, but beyond that, there's not a lot to do other than side quests. I'm like eight hours in and I'm finally to the point where I don't feel like I'm hundred percent on rails, but mm -hmm. dude, it felt so structured to the point where like, you might be able to not do the mission, but it's constantly hitting you in the face of keep going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That might eventually alleviate because I'm only about eight hours in, but man, it was like hardcore do the fucking quest. The, um, I, I don't think like the open world is as rich as the Witcher 3s, uh, which is kind of disappointing to me because that's what I was hoping for. And it is certainly not comparable to something like Grand Theft Auto 5, which... I mean, the, the main game is like the tutorial. Fucking around in the open world is where you're going to spend hundreds of hours. Yeah. I, I like that they they use the like wanted star system from Grand Theft Auto, but there are literally no cop chases. Yeah. It just uh, spawns police. Yeah. Like there's no AI for vehicle driving, pretty much. So... It literally just spawns police around you on foot. And then you just kind of drive a few blocks down and, and you're good. So speaking of that, and I, that's the extent I, of it. I was taking out some gang members. I accidentally shot somebody who was cowering in a corner who was not a gang member. And uh, Night City Cops like, oh, my God, he's a murderer. We got to kill him. And like there was no one around me. But. I do a 180, and I had literally been looking behind me. Mm -hmm. I do a 180, there's four cops. It's like, wait, what the fuck? They just spawn them on top of you. The yeah, time. I was pissed. I saw, that, I saw that happen to me literally, like, right when I signed off of the game. I'm like, this is bullshit. Like, I was in a tactical position where I was intentionally initiating this. Because, like, I know my back's covered. It's a dead, it's like the, kind of an edge of a map kind of scenario where nothing can get behind me. I have my firing lane here. I'm chucking grenades like I'm ready. And then all of a sudden, they're fucking behind me. He's like, fuck that. I was so careful planning out my spot. Mm -hmm. And then they just fucking spawn them there. And like the random cars and pedestrians are like that too. Like basically, if you're not looking at it and you stop looking at it, they like unspawn and then read new things yeah. spawn back in. Like I've been driving down a road and on the opposite side of the road going the opposite direction was a car I wanted to steal. So I turn my car around to go steal it, and the car is gone, and it's a different car. Yeah. Oh, also, um, okay, weird gameplay question, because I don't know yet. When you steal a car, is there a way to make it your own to where you can, like, call it? Nope. Okay. There, You can get other cars that way, like, to, to make your own, but not that way. Not traditional, okay. Yeah. Actually, I was just... Um, I, w I was doing some mission or whatever, and I was way off the beaten path, and I was following the the path to to go to the next objective, and I went into this like this cave, this really weird path, and I was like, oh, that's this is kind of weird, and then I'm driving through this like cave and like in the middle of a mountain or whatever, 
and I, I get to this part and I'm like, oh, wait, I recognize this. This is like a, it was one of the side missions I did a while back. It was like the set piece at the end of it. And then I kept driving down further and all of a sudden there's just this car in a garage. And I'm like, oh, this car looks cool. It looks like a, like a really futuristic exotic sports car, like a Bugatti or something. I'm like, oh my God. I was like in the market for another car, but I didn't have a lot of money to just buy one of the ones that you can buy. And I just happened to stumble upon this car. And it's one of the cars that if you find it, it's just like, it's your car. It's yours. You get the keys and you can call it whenever you want. And it also awesome. happens to be the fastest car in the game. Holy so I just, just like, randomly I, stumbled yeah, upon and it. I just stumbled upon it. Like I didn't look up any guides. I didn't know that was a thing. I'm just like, I'm trying to get to this mission and I, and I was in a weird spot. So it took a weird path to the mission and I just stumbled upon the, like the coolest car in the game. It's amazing. I, uh, I had a little bit of immersive storytelling with Cyberpunk, two, two different tales, um, which I, that's one of my favorite parts in gaming is being faced with a game that's like, oh, yeah, and then this thing happened, and then I did this, and, like, it's it's non-deterministic. It's not like, oh, so I played all gillied up on Call of Duty, and I did the mission the way that they scripted it, and then I finished the game. It's like, um, cool, dog. Uh, but these are like little things that are just stories that happen throughout your gameplay. Uh, so for mine, there was a, uh, a side quest pretty near me, except I saw a, a dock, which allows you to upgrade like cyberware and stuff. Um, so I bought a bunch of stuff. I upgraded some, uh, some of my weaponry. It was really fucking expensive. Uh, and then I go through this mission where it turns out that I, I learn about this guy and that he's actually an evil piece of shit. And so when I when I show up with this new information, the guy's like backing up like, oh, hey, no, nah, it's cool. Bygones be bygones. And I, I just upgraded all your shit. So uh, you, you should be happy with me. Uh, and so I murdered him. And it was great. It was fantastic because <laughs> there's like just a little bit of storytelling that's just unique for me where I went through the effort of upgrading my stuff from a guy that I didn't know was completely fucking evil. Uh, but it absolutely flavored my experience. And uh, I'm going to remember that. That was really cool. Um, there's also another thing where I was just running around collecting some uh, some various collectibles throughout the open world, and I hear a fucking explosion. Now, because this is Cyberpunk 2077, I assumed, oh, a car probably spawned inside of a building or a grandmother or something. It just exploded. <laughs> um, but no, it was actually on the roof, and apparently there was an argument that somebody was having about the effective placement of a bomb to blow up a building, and they just blew themselves up on a roof because they were dumbasses. And you collect them and like can intercept a conversation and figure out what they were what they were saying and who they were talking to before they blew up. And it was great. It's just like, nah, you're a fucking dumbass, but I'm not gonna stop you. Blow yourself up, see what I care. You go up there and there's a dead body and a bunch of explosives, and you're like, oh shit, okay. They did. Nice. It was great. So so there is a de there are a decent amount of things to find, I guess. Are there a lot of Easter eggs and stuff? I haven't yeah, done a lot of exploring. Not, not a bunch of stuff called out. Like in GTA, if you wanted to literally make a full night, like several hours of gameplay, running around at bars, listening to music and drinking and playing darts, you can spend like eight hours in Grand Theft Auto V doing that. Cyberpunk is not that kind of game. It is an open world, but it is not that I'm not going to say that yet because I really don't know because I haven't gotten to the point where I can find that out. Mm -hmm. But I'm hoping I can do that some with this. Maybe not to the degree, but at some some degree. Um, however, I do have a bit of a um, storytelling also from the game that is um, gets on some of the weird shit about this game that why in the fuck is it like this? So I'm on a mission or I'm about to start the mission and I'm going to talk to someone. This is early on. And while talking to them, I um, they give you two dialogue options. One is pretty much straight to it. And the other one is explain to him who you just got a mission from. So I go down, I'm like, explain to him who I just got a mission from. And it goes through saying, oh, I got this mission from this person, blah, 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 blah. And he tells me all about that person and all that. And then it takes you back to the same exact dialogue options. Cause that's typically what happens when you hit optional dialogues. It takes you back to your main options. Mm-hmm. And then I go to the one that actually advances it. And in that advancement, 
I drop who I'm getting the mission from. And the guy acts like he's never heard it before and goes through this whole spiel like we never talked about who I got the mission from. It's yeah. literally an option to let you talk to him first about this, yet they were stupid enough to not change the dialogue as if you've already not introduced the concept. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> it's like a punch in the face of like, bam, take out immersion. Yeah. In The Witcher 3, there was actually like a bunch of care put into the dialogue system. So if you chose things out of order, it still felt like it flowed fairly naturally. I've also encountered several times in Cyberpunk where I'll choose an optional dialogue option, which is completely negated after I choose the main option to progress the mission forward. And it's, it is extremely jarring. Well, it's so weird because at one point I had the option to progress the main dialogue and the option it gave me made no fucking sense. I'm like, why the fuck would I say that? And then I went through the optionals and I'm like, oh, that's why I would say that. Why are those fucking optionals? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I you can tell there's, there's a lot in this game that is clearly unfinished and just needed some extra time. I used to say that Cyberpunk should have been delayed for another six months. I'm thinking 12. I'm thinking next year this game is going to be really good. And until then, it's just kind of an alpha state. Mm -hmm. So I had a but mission it, where you're supposed to go into a, uh, I, I'm going to be vague with this, but you're supposed to go into a brothel and do some stuff. Um, And I went into this brothel. And then as soon as I went in, everyone was aggressive with me. I had to give up all my weapons and they were aggro from the start. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I just got mowed down to start with. And I'm thinking, well, this mission is just going to suck. Well, come to find out it was a bug. As soon as I reloaded, no one was aggro with me when I entered the brothel. What it turns out to be is you get to a scenario where you get to opt into making them aggro or you can stealth effectively. But the game said, no, fuck you. They're aggro and you don't have guns. Fuck yourself. <laughs> so v is calling out that the company said by February it should be mostly cleaned up. I fucking disagree. So, like, the, the hardcore bugs, like, you know, the... Uh, various T-posing people. Um, we're going to get into some of the audio issues and physics issues that I've had. Um, like that stuff, sure. I'll, I'll give you by February, it's going to be mostly cleaned up. But there are fundamental issues with this game that aren't, w without like a serious amount of rework, they're not just quick patches. Like the AI is fucking miserable. You're not going to get better AI in February. You're going to get usable game in February, but not good AI. Uh, and I mean, frankly, the AI is really, really hampering my immersion because I'm getting into these cool firefights, except these enemies act like they're bots from like Unreal Tournament 99 <laughs> like, or yeah. fucking Goldeneye. Like they either run straight at me shooting me or they hide behind something while I'm using power weapons. I can shoot through cover and I'm just bang. I literally spent six minutes in a mission taking on a, a high level enemy that I shouldn't have taken on at all. Like it could literally one shot me from across the map, but I hid behind something and just plugged away with my power weapons and it didn't I, move. And I just sat there wasting 400 fucking rifle bullets until it went down. And they're like, Oh my God, how did you kill this person? Well, cause they were an idiot. I had something similar where it was a key person and I was behind cover, and then I just kind of turned around the cover, and I'm on the same side of the cover as this person. But he didn't recognize that I was there, and I just kept gut shot him. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Like, I, he's fully exposed to me. I'm fully exposed to him, and he didn't move, and I just mowed him. Yeah. Now, I will say, you will find those kind of bugs in all games at some point. Yeah, like, it's cheesing, cheesing enemies is a long-time video game pastime, but it's not like everything is cheesable in, in various games. And this, it seems like that's the default state. It's, can I cheese this? Well, of course you can. It's cyberpunk. I, I, I don't outside of that one occurrence, like I, had to cheese I haven't anything. had that. Well, I started on hard difficulty. Holy yeah. shit. I'm still on hard. Like, I feel I could have went back to hard eventually after I kind of got some weapons, but to start, that was brutal. The scene where they're brutal. overheating you, I spent 30 minutes just reload, 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 fail, yep. reload. Same here. Hmm. That sucks. Yeah. 
But I also didn't upgrade any of my shit up until about hour six and a half. Six. Oh, that's when well, I started that do it. Yeah, you got to do the upgrades, I guess. Yeah. I will say, despite the game having a whole lot of things wrong with it and a whole lot of aspects of it being kind of mediocre, I'm still enjoying it. Like, I've put 30 hours into yeah. it and I just got to like the end, the ending sections. I don't think it's a bad game. I think yeah. it's broke. But I will say this, even if it wasn't as broke, I still don't think it's an amazing game. I think it's a good game. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I think if they fix a lot of these latent issues like the AI and some of the storytelling gaffes and uh, especially all the quest breaking bugs, they could have a great game on their hands at some point in time, uh, which I'm really looking forward to playing through this game again when it's finished. I'm I just... oh. Something I didn't get into here. It took me what what I say it was um like five hours or something like that to get to the title screen, five or four hours. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> this friend is getting out of fucking hand. I talked about this a few Epilogue, weeks ago with Bob. Or prologue, sorry, prologue. I like tutorials, I love storylized tutorials, but for the love of God, we're on a trend where we're gonna have a fucking 10 hour tutorial before the end of 2030. <laughs> it's kind of but, I'm telling you. The title screen happens what after your it's like right after the prologue though, right? So Eric, you never played uh you never played Deus Ex Human Revolution, did you? No. Um or not uh Human Revolution, Mankind Divided. So that Any game way. went through some some dev hell. Uh and apparently like 15 hours into the game, they teach you how to reload your gun. Also, Phantom Pain, Metal Gear Solid 5. Uh, yeah, the very last mission of the game um, tutorializes you. They teach you how to crouch and how to sneak. And to Dobby's point, I understand it's a long game. I mean, I'm fine with that. A tutorial section being that long, where you're on the rails that long, is tiresome. It's not all just I a tutorial, like- though, right? It's literally your character's backstory. Of the three that yeah. you pick at the beginning, well, so I mean, it's the game game that, that everybody else experiences exactly um, doesn't start until that title screen, right? Like the the game doesn't really open until the title screen. Until then, it's on rails. Um, kind of. It's not like they definitely want you to do the one thing to get past the title screen. But you do have options to go off and do other stuff. Like, I went through and did all my inventory stuff and went shopping and explored Night City a little bit. Like, I didn't do the main quest right away, but you're right. Nothing really changes until you do that one thing. Yeah. So you're, you're yeah. on rails. You're placed on rails, but you can get off of them. It's not recommended, and you're not going to get very far, but you, you can do other things. I mean, and the, the narrative is cool. I mean, I, I like the narrative. I, I think that that is actually one of the better parts of the game I've seen so far. It's mm. kind of cool they're doing it. And also, I don't see what your issue is with the brain dancing stuff. I find that kind of cool. Huh? No, no. Uh, I, didn't you, that, I, didn't, oh, I didn't. I thought you were saying I didn't care week. for the brain dance sections. Oh, okay. It was Adam. I, I kind of actually dig the brain dancing stuff. Yeah, I thought it was cool. I mean, it's a cool concept. I just didn't like how it was. I just didn't think it was fun. It just seemed tedious. I'm mad that tedious. they cut the, the feature. Like, the feature was going to be general purpose. You can buy and utilize brain dances for anything. Um, like, it's just a consumable item in the world or an item you can pick up. Um, kind of like watching TV in Grand Theft Auto 4 or 5. Um, but the uh, apparently the general purpose feature was cut right before the game ship. And so now we just got the story segments for brain dances and that's it. Oh, okay. Like um, I, I, the and, actual concept of a brain dance within the world of cyberpunk is really cool. Like recorded human experiences that other people can experience. That's kind of like cool from like a lore standpoint. But yeah, I, I did not enjoy those gameplay segments at all. I liked kind of the problems of puzzle solving. I haven't gotten very far, but from the way it sounds, they don't build it up much. But I was thinking that there was a lot of room to do some really complex yeah. problems mystery solving and yeah this. that's the part that could have been cool that i just feel like they didn't do it's it's just okay 
let it play yeah. until there's a highlighted section on the timeline and then you know that there's something there and you just have to look at the thing there and then that's it <laughs> like yeah. there's the zero death through the gameplay or anything on that part Although okay I, well I, in that case they may not build it out the way i was hoping and it ends up sucking but like from what i saw i'm like man there's some sweet shit they're gonna do with this there's some some optional objectives though that are really cool like if if you don't you know, figure out what the security system is for a place we're breaking into, you're walking in blind. And that's got real, you know, gameplay consequences if you walk in without knowing where all the cameras are. If you do know where they all are and you're heisting the place, well, congrats, you just cased the joint. Um, I, I thought it worked really well with the narrative and the gameplay kind of marrying each other because it's cyberpunk. And the number one rule of cyberpunk is you're going to heist things. That's it. No matter what you're doing in a cyberpunk universe, there is a heist at some point. Uh, if you're cyberpunk 2077, it's all heists all the time. So, so Dobby called this out to me when he was playing the game. And I saw this and he just called it out in chat. The game is filled with these artificial slow you down so we can talk moments. I wish they would just do cutscenes rather. Like this artificial, we're going to slow you down and not let you move that fast. It kind of frustrates me. I get why they're doing it. I don't like the segments. I would rather it be an actual cutscene rather than just something I have to hold the stick forward and wait for it to end. Hmm. I can see. I, I do like that you I, can always look around during cutscenes and stuff. Yeah, I do like that aspect. Feels of very it. half life. Oh, the dial. The yeah. During when. There was a scene where you're sitting at a diner and having dialogue with someone. And the ability to look around is really cool. And I love that they do snap you to important features. Like you're having a conversation and something important comes up on the screen on a TV. They'll actually adjust your view there in case yeah. you weren't paying attention to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But I love that the atmosphere is part of the store, like everything around you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's just... And I like that. I don't like when you're walking and it's making you just crawl. Yeah. I actually had a mission that bugged out afterwards where I was forced in that crawl speed. Oh, no. I had to save, reload, and then I was able to walk normally. <laughs> yep. I have also had that. I was about to ask you if you've ever gotten stuck in a conversation while crouching and then you can't get out of it because you're going to either skip all the dialogue. <laughs> so you're just you're uh, sitting there like crouch. You're like, not good usage of the C, the C key for sure. Dude, I literally got to a point where like there's stuff on the table I was wanting to check out while she was telling me the story. I'm like, okay, I'm crouched. Fuck! Yep. <laughs> and missed everything she said. <laughs> One sentence that's yeah. the most important thing in the game. So it's you, you, you so did mention good. liking the narrative so far. I'm just curious yeah. um, how far you are without spoiling it for anybody. Have you gotten to Keanu Reeves yet? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm through. Like you that... see him right after title screen. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. You see him like that, that's why I'm saying about how far the title screen is to the game. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I like that concept too. I like, love. That's yeah, the that's kinda... the part that I was really interested in. Well, and I, I like the. I'm a sucker for heist shit. I know the ocean movies are cliche. I love that shit. It's so like so having I love the first game, Ocean's I movie. enjoy it. I love like, heists. I lo yeah, I love the heist. Like Rick and Morty making fun of them. I enjoyed that episode, but I'm absolutely a dude that'll enjoys me a good heist movie. Dude, a good like heist I, I know movie. it's cliche into a script. I love it. <laughs> it's nothing like a good heist. And that's that was also one of my favorite parts of GTA five was prepping for the heist and then there's a bunch of missions leading up to it where you're like grabbing items and objects and stealing vehicles and like putting the chess pieces into place and then the last part of the heist mission is just you pulling that shit off without everything you've done to set it up uh it was fucking great also grand theft auto online heist a shit ton of fun i love doing that shit with josh and rs and we would just run through and steal a bunch of shit and shoot a bunch of people and it was fucking fantastic I really hope that Cyberpunk's multiplayer is half as good as that. Um, I was just going to say, the systems they have in this game around hacking, there is some cool-ass coordination you can do. Yup. Like, this game could be really good with a multiplayer. Or an online. Or 
I guess they're synonymous. Um, and no. Cyberpunk is getting a multiplayer mode. Um, it's coming out today. <laughs> last we heard, it's post-launch, but uh, maybe after the game is actually finished, we'll get it. Um, and also, I, I want to call out one more thing explicitly. So Tom has a GIF in our general chat in the 72 PC Discord. Oh my um, watch it. Open it up as original and unmute it so you can hear it. There is literally a scene where the voice actor recorded his lines, they changed the line and had a dev read the difference. The dev voice is still in the game instead of the original voice actor. It switches mid fucking sentence. Mid sentence. It's just like, oh, uh, hey, I'm going to give you this thing because I think, and you would like it very much. Have fun <laughs> with that. Like, you can tell it's some dude, like, at a keyboard, like, oh, thank God I fixed that bug, man. All right, I'm just going to put in this temp line and, uh, We'll have the voice actor re-record it when they can. Uh, yeah, it never made it. To Whether it never got re-recorded or never got put into place. Uh, yeah, there's temp audio still in the game for uh, one of the quests. Scott's um, calling out it's an office parody? Oh, so that could be an, an intentional comedic part? Uh, if, okay, so if that is an intentional little Easter egg thing, fucking great. Read the room, though, CD Projekt Red. You can't make a parody that looks like a bug because when your game's full of them, we're going to assume it's just a bug. <laughs> um, like, please, uh, you know, send send me the scene. I need to I need to see if. Yeah, I don't know what it's a parody, parody of. Yeah, because I've I've seen The Office. A lot. A whole lot. I don't. I don't know what they're trying to parody there, if anything. I, okay, but so it looks, <laughs> like a, it looks like a really bad bug. I do enjoy. I, I'm, not, I'm not convinced that it is. Yeah, there was another uh, reference to another piece of media that I really enjoyed, and it was the one you were telling yes. me about last week, uh, Tom. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> I, I saw that fantastic. after the cast. That is a very well done fucking Easter egg. Very yeah. well done. And that's, so, I mean, that's it, the thing that really hurts me is that it's really well written. This game has it's got some great story segments. I just wish everything else around the story were better. I think that there's a lot of good stuff in the game. Honestly, I love the gunplay. I think the gunplay is great. I it, think it's that, fine. It feels it reminds me. It's like a slower paced Borderlands kind of. It reminds me of. Yeah, it feels for like a, it sucks to me. For a first-person open-world game, I think that the gunplay is really well. I, I think it's a really, really solid gunplay. Um, one thing I've had an issue with is when I'm upgrading and, like, attaching modifications, sometimes my game bugs out and I click the mod and it just shows me all my guns rather than yeah. my mods. Which is slightly frustrating, but I, I like it. I think that there's a lot of talents also. I don't know if you guys really hit on this last week. I don't remember, but... um. There's a lot of skills you can learn. Like there's what it'd be 15 different skill trees. I absolutely hate the skill trees. Um, I, in, I have this issue with a lot of games that have these types of progression systems. The sphere grid and final fantasy 10 and this upgrade system are basically the same. Thing. And hear hear me out before you start yelling at me, Dobby, I know you're screaming right now. I can hear it. Um, so the Sphere Grid in Final Fantasy X let you roam around and add attributes from, you know, based on where you could as long as you're following a path. But, like, 95% of the spheres on the Sphere Grid were, we're going to improve this thing by 2%. We're going to improve this aspect by 5%. We're going to allow when this thing happens, this increases by 10%. It is all stat line upgrades. There, There's, like four or five interesting abilities in and that's probably an exaggeration it's probably more like 10 interesting abilities across all of the stat trees but for the vast majority of them like 80 percent are just we will increase this by this percent and that's fucking boring ah i, I can see where you don't like that i'm a dude that'll play idle games because i love watching numbers grow so give me those percentages man <laughs> <laughs> I, what I really want from that is, like, uh, Deus Ex had a lot of really, really fucking cool abilities. 
Um, like, I mean, just just about anything. Vision systems. Um, you know, you can run around, you can double jump, you can not take fall damage. And Cyberpunk does share those, but it had a whole lot of weird stuff, like ballistic armor that you can trigger, or a cloaking system, or other stuff. And Cyberpunk has very boring skill trees in comparison. I can see the argument that some people would be bored with the skill tree, and I absolutely understand that. Personally, I enjoy it. I like it a lot, but I can see it. As well as if you're someone who, like, I think this kind of fits Adam's way that he plays. I think you actually might have referenced this. It's a lot there you have to fucking read just mm -hmm. to figure out what you want to do, where if you're someone that just wants to play the fucking game, it gets in the way. That's why most of my upgrades were just like, Oh, cool! My my pistol ADS is faster, or I do this much more damage with rifles. Like I did a lot of upgrades that were just not the the interesting abilities and stuff, <laughs> like just the yeah. boring stuff. Where I was like, all right, let me just put this point on here so that I can, you know, Keep left going. click. I can left click enemies some more, and it's a little more effective. And I they really do have some cool abilities around that kind of playstyle, though, which is cool. I I want a skill tree to. Maybe not fundamentally, but to lean into changing how I play the game. Like in Deus Ex or Borderlands, when you unlock certain abilities, you went, oh shit, thank God. This mission would have been a massive pain in the ass had I not grabbed this thing and this thing, and now I can use them in concert to accomplish this objective. In Cyberpunk, it's, I'm going to sneak around, I'm going to backstab when I can, and then I'm just going to blast when I can't. And my playstyle hasn't ever fundamentally changed, with the exception of getting new weapons. New weapons will change how I play. New skills never do. That is kind of missing the mark in my book. Um, I actually just got an up or like just upgraded my tree, and it is changing how I play. Because okay. I was a guns blazing dude all the way, and then I started getting all these upgrades and bonuses for being stealth, and I'm like, well, shit, time to be sneaky. I, I hope that that doesn't become a first order optimal strategy because don't get me wrong, the stealth system is nice, but I do want to play the game fundamentally different than how I play Deus Ex or Skyrim. Uh, I've been in my, in my RPGs this year. I have set out uh, as a personal challenge to myself to play in ways that I normally wouldn't. Like uh, there's a DD and uh, campaign that I'm in right now where I'm playing a cleric. I never fucking play healers. I never fucking play healer, but I am because I want to mix things up and, uh, you know, play a little bit differently than how I would otherwise. Cyberpunk has showed me that even though I made a guns blazing guy, I'm going to play it like fucking Skyrim or Deus Ex. I'm going to sneak around. I'm going to snap some necks. I'm going to maybe shoot somebody stealthily. Silence. I think that, that's but then, I've seen that's on you though. Yeah. Then just don't. <laughs> <laughs> Like, the I, systems I, are there not, for in that game not to do it. It's pretty that's, simple that's, not to do it. That's why it's a first-order op optimal strategy. It's because compared to everything else I could do, the stealthy angle is often the best one. It is clearly the most overpowered way to play the game. Um, and there have been very few instances where I've had the... where, where the game has pushed me to not be stealthy. It's probably because you're I'm playing saying. on a harder difficulty. Yeah, that's, that's probably too. Yeah, you can get insta kills it's, that way, which yeah, is great on normal. It's pretty easy to just to just also, walk in, get seen immediately, and then just shoot everybody. I want to call out. Remember how we said the cheesiest and worst way to apply difficulty is to bullet sponge and just make them deadlier. That's yeah. exactly what they did. That's exactly like when I moved when I moved it from hard to normal. The same exact scene became a cakewalk because oh. I'm killing them with four headshots instead of unloading an entire clip on their head and only yeah. taking a quarter of their health. Yep. Yeah, I might I might change it to easy because you're exactly right. The hard difficulty doesn't do anything except make me play a little bit more cautious, but it doesn't make the game more interesting. It just makes it take longer. No, and I get it. Some games, you get the full exposure of the game by playing on a harder difficulty. I don't. To me, this didn't feel like that. When I switched it, it just felt like they're just fucking sponges. Yeah. Get that shit out of here. Go on normal <laughs> and just have fun with it. Because every time I've tried to do stealth, it's turned into guns a blazing. Like I'll get like the first five guys that way, and then it just turns on to full on like, okay, AR out. Let's do this shit. 
Pretty much, yeah. Uh, also, I I have the shotguns feel great to use. The mark of any good shooter is, you know, if the shotgun feels feels nice to use, and goddamn, they do. Man, how are we always so different? I don't like the shotgun. Wow, okay. I only used the shotgun once, cool. and that was because it was a mission. I didn't have a lot of guns, and I ran out of ammo for the guns I liked. It doesn't do enough <laughs> damage for me. Doom 2016 good, but it does feel good to use. I did mainly pistols and like a DMR, a rifle. I like the pistols. I like the rifles. I didn't do anything with, like, gun automatic I deal with fire that much. I've done a uh, light machine gun for a minute. They fucking feel cl like clunky in the way you want a light machine gun to feel. Ooh. Like just heavy, cumbersome, and you're throwing a pound of lead a second. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was nice. A little off topic. Josh asked in the chat, did we talk about Back for Blood yet? Uh, not yet or back no, yeah. well, we, we, we talked did last to, we, week yeah we brought it up last week uh, none of us have played it or anything but uh, I, I was, I was, I was going to bring it up before we're done because I did watch them play it yeah oh. it looks and like Left for Dead but a third one better that's gunplay way better gunplay that's true and uh, like there's a generic source engine game there's a card system to it which is really unique um, so, okay, fuck it. We're getting into it right now. So left for dead, the game would adjust itself based on how you were doing. Uh, like the way it would, they called it, Josh explained, it's called the director. Well, now before you get into a game, the director plays two cards and it, these cards will impact that level or that stage. So I watched them and one of them, one of the cards that played was like this fog that it put on the map where you couldn't see that far. And then it did something to like up the whole hordes. And then each player gets to play a card to counter. Oh, the card plays for the whole session. I thought it was just for each stage, but they get to play a card each stage. But either way, there's a card system that's going to impact the world. The director will play some, and then each player gets to play one encounter. So it helps like really keep the shit fresh. Yeah, okay, new card each stage. Okay, so it builds on itself. You play one each stage. Okay. So if they play like there's going to be fog on the map the first stage, it automatically applies to the next stage as well, and they get to add a new card. Hmm. So it's a, it's a meta game on top of it that impacts directly how the game plays, which is cool. Nice. Um, right. And he was explaining while a lot of the models look like Left 4 Dead models, they do do different things. So while there's something that looks almost identical to a hunter, it isn't a hunter. So this this is looking like take Left 4 Dead from 2010, make all the fucking upgrades you want that you want a game to do, and it's there. I said doo doo. Oh, you did say doo doo. Fuck I you. Doo -doo. I did, and I thought that in my head too. I didn't say it, and I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad Dobby pointed it out. <laughs> Thank you, Dobby. Fuck our chat. You're the best. <laughs> but no um i was heavy he very heavily saying this is probably gonna be day one by after seeing the alpha this is i want to get into the discord and see if i get a fucking key kind of <laughs> it looks great like uh, josh said this when i was watching it is the best fucking alpha i've ever seen like the game looks done it's just there's only one stage. Now, granted, it's been alpha, so they're probably going to adjust balancing and stuff. Done game? What? Do, do games get finished? <laughs> uh, yeah. Sounds so weird to me. Like, those words don't go together. When are games done? They're done when they're in, they're in alpha, apparently. Oh. They're, they're, they're but done. If, but if they're in beta, but if they're them. in beta, they're not done. Okay. Got and it. then if they're a major AAA release from a renowned studio with years of hype, it is really not done. It won't be done until the game of the year release of it. Yeah. But yeah, that that it looks really good. Excuse me. So, if anyone liked Left 4 Dead, get this. It is it is just so it looks so fucking awesome. But, yeah, I'm I'm definitely gonna try to get into the alpha because uh, yeah, I I need to scratch that Left 4 Dead itch and uh, it looks like. It looks like that'll do it. So uh, back for blood. Uh, I don't know. Go Google it or something. We'll give it away. <laughs> Ten years if we want to get in the alpha. 
get into their Discord. Or we know someone who just went to the Discord, asked for a key, and they sent him three keys. <laughs> Josh says. So I got. <laughs> Josh says zombies are sick, and I, I think by definition, zombies are indeed sick. Yes. Yeah, we know Josh. I mean, that's why they're zombies. They are. They are very. Ill. That's why it's called the T virus. Yeah. Ooh. But um, yeah, it's it's looking good. I will get it either way. Um, anyone have anything else they're wanting to say about that and or cyberpunk? Because kind of um, pivoted off that real quick. So is, was there anything do, left anyone wanted to bring up? The only thing so, that I had to say about cyberpunk still is that. And this is a character fault on my part, but I've I'm gotten to the point where I know that I have to make decisions that matter that are going to affect the ending of the game, and you know if I wanted want to if I wanted to make decisions that I had to deal with the consequences for, I mean like I already have to deal with that in real life. I don't really want to deal with that in Cyberpunk too. <laughs> I could just just give me like an ending. Just give me a, a linear story. I don't don't, don't make me <laughs> choose the ending. Yeah, that's the character <laughs> thing with you because I love <laughs> Like all I'm gonna do is be like either disappointed or fine with the ending, and then I'm just gonna look up all the other endings anyway. I'm not gonna play these out. Yeah. So well, then here. Remove remove the tension. Always pick the top option. There you go. All right. Yeah, I could do oh. that. Yeah, but I don't want now. the shame of knowing that I did this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you would. It's a good thing you bounced off. I don't. The I don't want me to do this. I want. I want the character to make a bad decision, and I can be like, "Ah, oh, well, you shouldn't have done that, dude." Oh my god! I, mean, so like- no <laughs> I would have never done that. <laughs> Some of the decisions in the, in, in the Witcher 3, when it looks like, oh, hey, I'm going to be a morally, you know, nice, good guy. It's like, oh, shit, I just fucked the whole world. Yeah. Look at all these people dead yeah. because I did the nice thing and didn't, like, murder this guy. It's like, well, that that sucks, I guess. Nothing you can do, though. But no, I, I know that I know that that's guy. that's part of the appeal. And, like, that's that's the one of the compelling parts about narratives like that. I was just... That's the CD Projekt Red playbook, is how do we make you feel like an ass for making a decision that has no clear winner? (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. I like moral gray areas. That's why I think the Last of Us games games are so good. I'm so surprised, Eric, because, like, honestly, when it comes to game storytelling, The Witcher 3 is basically perfectly up your alley because of that. Because there is no good guy, bad guy. It's like, well, everyone's kind of an asshole. How do I want to thread this needle? Uh, and it works really fucking well. So The Witcher has always been one of those games where like, eh, at some point I'll play it. I've just never actively sought it out. And it's not because I don't think I would enjoy it. It's because I don't really want to put that much time into a game. Yeah. I mean, you could because just mainline the I got to put that time into Dota. <laughs> Well, that's, that's the other thing is that CD Projekt Red also, and I'm not saying that this has or does not have impact on how Cyberpunk plays, because I wouldn't know, but uh, there are instances of side quests affecting the main story and the available endings of the game. So if you're straight main line quest, you might be missing something. That's a kick to the teeth for people like me. Just no, saying... So yeah. Well, well I look f- I look forward to watching the videos of somebody else <laughs> playing those endings after I do my ending. <laughs> so is that, that, that being said, I think I the don't... ending I'm doing right now is the direct result of finishing a side quest line. But I did do like a couple of side quest lines. So, without spoils, I don't think it's a spoil to say how many endings is it confirmed exactly how many endings there are right now. I do not know. Like, how much footage am I going to have to watch after I meet this first time? I don't watch the movie's blank. So that endings. I don't have to play the game again. So it's basically all of Game of Thrones times five. Oh. Then you've got to watch Breaking Bad again. Uh, again. And then you've got to hear me talk about I, that. I already ones. watched Breaking Bad again this year. Now i got to do it again. No. I've had enough sadness this year. Everyone has. But this year's been has. great. Um, 
<laughs> he he says, trying to convince himself. Um, <laughs> so I I do have to say, like I played mm, six hours of Cyberpunk last night, um, and by far. It was the buggiest session I have ever had with that game. Like, there's always a couple bugs, but they're not super impacting. Mm -hmm. I had to restart the game several times. It crashed on me oh. several times. I had geometry murder me several times. I need to oh. figure out a way to post this. I have, like, eight clips, but I didn't want to flood any of the 72 PC channels. We need a cyberpunk bug thread channel <laughs> where I can just dump all this shit. I was I was climbing up on some rocks because I wanted to explore this little area that was kind of out of the way. I had no reason to be there, but I was like, oh, cool. Look, it's a house on a hill. I wonder what's there. I'm going to steal all their shit. Um, and I'm climbing up on on this rock like they're, they're pushed up against the house. And I, I want to jump over the retaining wall and go steal all their shit. Um, I step on this rock and apparently my character rolled their ankles so hard that it fired them at the ground at 7,000 miles per hour, <laughs> killing them instantly. Um, I just like, I'm just like crawling. You can see like clambers up and I'm staying on top of something and just boom, hit the ground <laughs> dead instant. It's like, what? Flatlined. And, and I could consistently make that happen. Like, this place, I can go there and on any of these rocks, jump, and eventually I will jump into it in such a way where I will either get thrown into the ground and explode, or I will get thrown a million feet into the air and just fall to my death. Give your game it and throw it in place of the day. I, I want to see it. Oh, I'm there's there are so <laughs> many fucking bugs. You you shouldn't have told me that. That's all I'm gonna do now. It was I bad. mean it is I'm <sighs> I don't want to hammer it because we said it a lot. But yeah, I mean, there's there's just so Game many. is broke. You're going to have to use the save feature. I've had to use the save feature a good bit just to get around yeah, bugs. A lot. Um, I even had an issue where apparently the performance devolved so much that I had to actually restart the game. Like it got down to three, four FPS. That's something I'm actually going to pat him on the back for. I feel the performance of that game is way better than it should be. On PC, yeah, I agree. Yeah, no, on PC, yeah, yeah. yeah. Clearly not on console. No. <laughs> for, I was for me, the game has run really well on I a, was... a twenty eighty. Yeah, I mean, it's not a cheap card. Yeah, same. Uh, um, I was I was impressed. Like I, I when I first bought and installed the game, I didn't expect when I looked at all the settings that were defaulted to ultra all the way with ray tracing and everything. Like I didn't expect that to run well, and it actually runs pretty well. Yeah, it preset mine to ultra. Um, I was getting 30 frames, so I just bumped it down to high. I'm running oh, every once in a while I'll dip below 60, but I'm running a 1080. Oh yeah. That's, That's not no, like I, yeah. I, I'm pretty happy with it. So the, yeah. The I rate mean, the ray trace lighting though. Oh my god. It's I can oh, my the god. way the lights are in that game or this game, oh. I could see why ray tracing would just oh like, my god dude. blow your mind away. <laughs> it is really fucking pretty. I actually so I never have preferred rain in open world games because it makes driving all stupid. Uh in this, <laughs> yeah. I vastly prefer all when the it rain. rains in night because Night god. nighttime rain. Give me all of the nighttime rain. Oh well, you, and it, it also helps, helps that the it also helps that the driving's not great to start with. Yeah, that's yeah. it. But yeah. Um, so, uh, have you guys uh, played with controller at all, or have you guys always been mouse keyboard? Only mouse and keyboard. I will say. Um, so, did did they mention? And Eric, you you just went through the the beginning of the game. Does your motorcycle have a stash? The car is. You can open up your trunk and modify stuff in your stash from there. And the motorcycle theoretically has one, but I've only been able to get to it when my bike was upside down or on its side, and I can walk up to it and get to the stash. But if I try to get to it while the bike is sitting up can't so if i need to get to my stash and i have my motorcycle near i have to intentionally crash the bike to get there unless i'm doing um, something terribly wrong like, i have, I have no, i've played for I've 30 hours and i have not used the stash once i was gonna ask what's the stash <laughs> and i haven't had anything talk about a trunk stash i i, I clearly i don't know what a stash is yeah so um there are weight carrying limits in the game yes um apparently I, I i i after you said stash, I know what a stash is. It's just, yeah, it's never been introduced. 
Okay, it, it just, definitely. There's a tutorial section for it. it. It was definitely said somewhere at the beginning of the game. Did you ever go into your apartment? Because I think that's where they discuss it. Maybe that was one of the moments where I accidentally crouched. Oh, okay. yeah, <laughs> you're fucked then. You're never gonna. But Tom, uh, like, why do you need the stash though? I like, don't need it. Okay. I, I don't need it at all. Um. I looked for it because I've got this this issue in every single Fallout game that I've played where I'll grab, or Skyrim, I'll grab too much shit, like too many goddamn clogs or cheese wheels or something, and I won't be able to carry anything else. So I have been like obsessively inventory managing, and it turns out I just don't fucking have to. The weight doesn't matter that much in the game, and I can carry everything I want anyway, so... I, I don't did, know why it's actually. I did run into the weight limit a couple times, but I just. Okay. I mean, you just take some of your guns and turn them into parts, and then you're good. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. And you're only really gun using gun three guns at a time, anyway. So. Yeah. The only pointless. thing I could see for the stash is if you get a lot of weapons that are like, um, when you hit this level, it fully opens up, kind of thing, mm -hmm. and maybe keeping a hold of those. Yeah. But oh, I, I haven't actually played with those weapons yet, so I don't know if there's actually a good return on using those or not, but that's about the only thing I could see keeping in that fashion. So luckily, but this is uh, all the, the cyberpunk I have to talk about today. We can move on to other topics. Apologies to everyone. This is now the new Dark Souls. Yes. Well, just because it's a new game, which makes sense. And it's yeah. um, got a lot of news. So, oh, hold on. We still have one more topic. Do we? EFT oh, yeah, is EFT. EFT. That's what? Uh, EFT. Yeah, I played some this week. Oh, <laughs> I got nothing. Oh, man. Uh, they had a cool tournament. Right. That was neat. That was cool to watch. The Punisher tournaments are really yeah. fucking cool. Yeah. Um, so, this one was in labs, and they did uh, EU... And NA, I think. I think they may have one other region they, as well, but yeah. Yeah, they had another. They had um, Australia. Yeah, it was really cool. So, yeah. That's all I got. Other than that, I've just been, you know, playing the game occasionally. Sucking occasionally. Doing cool things occasionally. Such as Tarkov. Nothing, yeah. Nothing really new to uh, report on that, on that front. That's just the only other game I happened to play this week. All right. Well, in that case, um, shall we get into news? Yes. And by that, I mean, shall we talk more about Cyberpunk? Hey. Ah. Cyberpunk 2, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> All right. So I'll, I'll lead off with this one. This one was actually breaking. It's nothing concrete yet. Just want to reference it because it is really telling. Uh, currently, two different investment groups that are tied to CD Projekt Red are in talks of potentially starting a class action lawsuit against CD Projekt Red. Oh, so like this has been so mismanaged and everything like to the degree where they may get sued by shareholders. Whoops. <laughs> nuts. I do want to know how many shareholders sued Bethesda for literally everything they do. Uh, they didn't have really bad fallout though until yeah, fallout 76. Yeah. No, no, four was bad. Four was very bad. See, you keep saying that. I kept finding people that really enjoyed 4. 4 had probably the cleanest like FPS gameplay of any Fallout game and by far the weakest RPG aspects of I any mean, Fallout game. That's nothing like what we're talking about, Tom. You know it. No, I mean, the, the Fallout 4 is a broken game. Every game Bethesda releases is broken by default. It's not... Not as broken, but it's... I'm just saying they didn't get flat. Like, 76, like, they got torn a new one. Yeah. But, um, either way, they might get sued now by their own investors. Yay. Fun situation. Um, IGN has backtracked on their console review. I think probably because they didn't initially review it for the old consoles would be my guess. But yeah. 4 out of 10 is what they're getting on xbox one ps4 so yikes tom's favorite 10 out of 10 meme gives a 4 out of 10 <laughs> that's how you know it's bad a 4 out of 10 from ign is like a negative 8 anywhere else. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, funny. Yeah, what else we got here? We've got a long fucking thing I can't read without moving. Uh, the cost of fixing Cyberpunk 2077 is irrelevant compared to restoring the company's reputation, says CD Projekt Red, a.k.a. PR spin this to hell. Yep. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. Was there anything else meaningful in that, Tom? Or is uh, it just yeah, making a statement? Really about it. The the management of CD Projekt Red said, oh my God, what have we done after doing exactly what they did? Um, so <laughs> yeah, that's, that's now news. Um, also, uh, there was a company, Antal, uh, Antal, All Hands meeting, um, where a developer stood up um, and they said, hey, kind of funny how we made a game about uh, corporations with unlimited power abusing their employees in a you know dystopian hellscape future setting. Um, and you, you did that to us. So, huh, isn't that neat? Um, they were then shot out of a cannon into the sun. <laughs> I don't know if anything actually happened to that dev, but uh, apparently the uh, the on the ground devs who were pushed into making these like you know release the game before it's done decisions by management uh, are getting a, a little little angsty. Um, so this might be the a, a little bit of a tip of an iceberg if um, things don't shape up management side. And. I, I feel their uh, frustration. I think anyone who's in software development has had this where they've told their manager it's not ready and the manager's like, well, we need the bare bones of it. Ship it. We'll deal with it post. And then it's a fucking nightmare. Yep. So this this is just a very public facing version of that and I feel horrible for them. Yeah. Um, um, so this so one's a doozy. Go ahead and get it, Tom. <laughs> yeah, so uh, apparently um, Sony needs to have some fun with Cyberpunk as well because the world isn't already having enough. Uh, Sony has now pulled the game from the PlayStation Store and you can no longer buy Cyberpunk 2077 online um, for the PlayStation. Um, and beyond that, Sony's refund policy to date has always been, hey, if you download a game digitally... Uh, there's no refund. Like, you can buy it, but as soon as you download that, no refund. You, you already got the data. Go fuck yourself. Uh, apparently, Sony is now making an exception to their refund policies, so anyone who did buy Cyberpunk 2077 on the PlayStation Store can get a full refund if they request one. That's not not done. Microsoft <laughs> also put out a tweet, and they said, uh, yeah, ditto, except we're not taking the game down, but... If you want a refund, we'll give you one. Um, apparently, so, a, and this is just a rumor, but uh, you know, Microsoft and Sony have to qualify this. We alluded to this last week. They have to qualify games that are on their platform, you know, for them to be sold at all. Apparently, and again, this is a rumor. Uh, Sony and Microsoft both told CD Projekt Red, "Okay, these are some serious issues, but if you promise to have it fixed by launch day, you can launch and we'll qualify." CD Projekt Red promised, and the rest is history. That's once again rumor, not official yeah. news, rumor. but not official. It's not official, but I could really see it because yeah. they vet games. So yeah, they do. Yeah, and here's something else that's kind of damning. Sony didn't even do this move with No Man's Sky. Yeah, with all of the backlash around that, they didn't pull No Man's. They didn't offer this kind of refund for No Man's. Yeah. So Well, I mean, is it is the refund just because of how buggy it is or is it like the actual frame performance. rate and performance because from what it's, I understand it is abysmal on last gen consoles. I think it's probably because of performance. Because they're not doing the same thing for like Steam and stuff. Like it's just the normal return policy in place and stuff. Yeah. I'm pretty sure if you made that case, because you can ask for a refund. You're not going to get automatically denied. Mm -hmm. I imagine that if you ask for a refund on Cyberpunk, you would get it. Even CD Projekt Red themselves are starting to handle refunds. And they said, hey, if you know whatever store isn't giving you a refund on these titles, email us and we'll get you your money back. Then again, what's the what's the play limit on Steam's refund pro policy? Two hours. hours generally, but I mean, uh, that's plenty. That that's it's plenty. Like, of, that's not much for the game, but it's plenty of time to see the bugs. <laughs> yeah. But, and 
it's a guideline. I, I have mm -hmm. absolutely played a game for more than two hours and then refunded it and said, hey, this thing, you know, for whatever reason, please give me money back. And Steam has generally been fine with that as long as you've got a good reason. Uh, for and Cyberpunk, we'll if you want to buy this thing when it's finished and you don't want to play it until it is, just ask. The worst thing that they can tell you is no. And once again, um, No Man's Sky is an example. Steam has yep. been known to make mass exceptions. Yeah. Like for No Man's Sky, they actually deliberately called out that game and said these restrictions are not in place. Yep. Um, I, I Speaking of No Man's Sky, I really love how this has, like No Man's Sky has become a verb. If you go to the Cyberpunk subreddit, people are saying, God damn, I really hope CDPR just No Man's Skies this whole game. <laughs> because Hello Games like took that pile of shit that they launched or the pile of uh misrepresentative advertising okay there you around. go i will i won't disagree there <laughs> and turn it around into one of the you know best chill uh automatic space exploration games money could buy uh but they did good work and now now people are saying that yeah we really hope that they can uh they can pull a hello games with this one Okay, now here's where I have to defend CD Projekt Red. I don't feel they oversold their game, and I feel it is a good game. So I don't think it necessarily fits the No Man's Sky bill where their issue isn't with the game. Oh, well, I mean, it is with the game. But it's not with how the game plays or what the game's doing. It's this um, thing is fucking um, bugged. I think I'm there were some things they said that absolutely are not in the game or... Yeah, there there are some things that they advertise that then got pulled out at the last minute because it wasn't finished. Uh, brain dances being one of them. You get a few in story segments, but but uh, did they wasn't there advertise those? I never yeah. saw anything about what they yes. do in advertising for them because I've so never even saw reference of it. So in the game, you can buy software titles, you can buy brain dances, and you were going to be able to use those. Uh, that, that they, that, that, they that's said. not what I'm asking though. Like, I'm talking legit said, advertising. Yeah, they said in their marketing material and in developer interviews, you will be able to use this feature. And then you can't because it's not finished. Um, like, uh, the multiplayer mode is a, it's a great part, but they said pretty early on that this is coming after launch, right? It was going to be a full package, and they said, nah, it's not going to happen. So we, we got that early. Um, but yeah, there's a lot in the game that's just not done. The only just thing, the only other thing that I remember is them talking about how each NPC is on like a, it's like a living and breathing world where each NPC actually has like a day to day, day and night cycle, which isn't true because most of the NPCs vanish as soon as you turn around and stop yeah. looking at them. Yeah. Well, and, um, and there's like no AI for anything. They're just all on tracks. Yeah. The AI is fucking broken. I mean, the, so in the game, there's a, I'm avoiding spoilers, but there, you know, it's the future, right? There are self-driving cars. And one of the story segments has you interact with a self-driving car. Um, do you get to use that outside of the game? Can you sit in the back seat of a self-driving car and get driven around to story missions? No, because it turns out the vehicles actually don't have any AI themselves. They don't know how to drive. It's not like Grand Theft Auto where they can intelligently route around things and respond to uh, various inputs in their environment. They're literally dumb boxes that just happen to follow a road because that's how they were scripted. Um, there is nothing else to them. And yeah, they promised a living, breathing world. We didn't get anything like that. The game is unfinished. I like the game. Um, yeah, I, I like it too. I like, I like it too. It's great for an <laughs> It's great for an elf, but let's not be confused about what it is. Um, so, uh, oh no, that was that was the last story. That's it. Microsoft thing. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, thank you for tuning in to the Cyberpunk 2077 podcast, where you can cyberpunk your podcast all 2077 times. Uh, cool. Yeah. Um. <laughs> anyone have anything they want to get on the way out? Uh, try to think. I feel like I had something, but uh, uh, more Beat Saber going. this week. Join the Discord. I'll be dancing for you. Is that a promise? Yes. No, it's not a promise. It's a threat. Oh. There you go. Tom making threats live. 
I feel um threatened. That, feel that's kind of yeah. But okay. Um, that said, I think time for the rundown. Run it down, brother man. Okay. So, if um, many of you don't know, uh, we run this uh, sucker live on Twitch at 72 PC or um, twitch.tv slash 72 PC every Saturday night, 6 it's, p.m. Pacific, it's 9 p.m. Pin connector. Yeah, it's not, 72 not. pin connector. And... Oh, fuck me. I am out of it. <laughs> fuck it. Redoing it. You guys ready for the rundown? Just do the easy no. one. Go to the website. So, you all can just um, go to our YouTube, 72 Pin Connector on YouTube. We have our podcast up there, small little clips, all sorts of different shit. If you're over there watching this right now, we also run this thing live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash 72 Pin Connector. We are live every Saturday night, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Come be part of the chat, be part of the game. Just have a good old fucking time with us. Um, we have a website, 72PinConnector.com. has links to everything we do. Go there, get it, get served. Um, I'm just going to cut it at that because I am falling the fuck apart, fellas. Yeah. Join the Discord. It's a cool place to hang out and play games and chat. Yeah. Discord. Get there. Cool people. Cool games. Well, fellas, I'm done. Like, I'm fucking tapped. <laughs> Eric's, Eric's done. I'll, Eric's I don't know why. My, my brain's drained. Mm. Well, I guess until next week, fellas. Game on. See you, everybody. Bye.